So the Russian response um, with regard to the recent attack uh, over the weekend against the civilian target that is the Kersh, also known as Crimea Bridge connecting mainland Russia to Crimea, has not been long in coming. It's now Monday morning, um, uh, approaching 8am. This is Monday the 10th of October and the Russians have just launched major and multiple missile strikes against Kiev, including if the reports emerging are to be believed against Zelensky's office. The Russians are not playing. They've definitely lost momentum on the battlefield. That's beyond per adventure. They have suffered significant uh, reverses and the Ukrainians on the battlefield in the south and the east are on the front foot and obviously Russia's partial mobilisation is yet to take effect because the men who've been called up or drafted have to be trained, certainly in the basics, or those who have previous military experience have to go through a ref some kind of refresher training course before they can be sent to the front line. But the Russians have a vast arsenal of hypersonic missiles and nuclear weapons and they're now bringing some of those missiles to bear against Kiev. This is what happens when you uh, go one step too far. The attack against the Kersh Bridge was a major escalation for symbolic reasons, if nothing else, and the Russians are responding in kind. Zelensky has proven himself to be a disaster. His sense of triumphalism over Ukraine's uh, successes recently um, have, uh, have, a, have had the effect of him lapsing into hubris. His comments in response to the Kersh Bridge attack would not have gone down well in the Kremlin when he said, I believe the weather is fine in Crimea today, but it's a bit cloudy. That would be seen as a provocation. It was a provocation. Uh, three people were killed in that attack against the Kersh Bridge. Uh, hopefully no civilians are killed in these Kiev attacks. Um, hard to believe that none were. I've watched some of the videos. This was a major uh, missile strike against Kiev this morning. The war is now coming home to the people of Western Ukraine in a way it had not before. Uh, the people of the Donbass, of course, have been suffering this kind of shelling uh, and missile strikes for eight years before the conflict began. And there was not one tincture of protest or outcry in the West because guess what? The West doesn't care about the death, about Russian civilian lives or those who um, have risen up against a coup government in Kiev and would rather join Russia. Anyway, that's where we are now, eight months into this conflict. It's escalating uh, rather than de-escalating and that's a worrying thing because the longer it goes on, the more chance that the West, Western countries, especially the UK and the US, will find themselves in direct military confrontation with Russia. Of course, most military experts in the West are looking at Russia's uh, relatively lacklustre performance uh, in, in the war with glee. Uh, they see this as evidence that Russia's military is not the modernised, nimble, cohesive force an entity that many believed it was uh, um, due to Putin's modernization program, which he implemented or began to implement after the Georgian conflict in 2008. Some imponderables remain for me, which is why Russia has not been able to um, assert mastery of the air with its vast uh, inventory of combat aircraft, over a 1, thousand, 1,600 I believe they have, of fighters, fighter bombers, strike aircraft, and the lack of operational integration between air and land for ground forces. But still in all, there are some who believe that Russia has yet to fully mobilize, well, it's not fully mobilized, but has yet to bring to bear its, its full military potential in this conflict, held back as it's been by the stricture placed on this uh, conflict from the Russian side as a special military operation which does not allow Russia to uh, unleash its full military potential. 
But if things go on as they are, I think Russia is going to have, Putin's going to have no choice. But he's certainly up the ante this morning. These are major missile strikes against a European capital, such as haven't been seen since the Second World War. Indeed, maybe I meant being inaccurate, and such that hasn't been seen since Belgrade was bombed by NATO in the 1999 uh, air campaign waged there. So um, there is no uh, diplomatic track on the horizon. Uh, it seems to me that the Russians are clearly now bent on escalating this conflict. And I think the Kersh Bridge assault may be one of the most seminal moments in the conflict thus far with regard to how Russia responds and how it changes tack when it comes to waging its war against the Ukrainians and, by extension, the West. That's all I've got to say. Peace out.